What's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Scares. Today we're bringing it back to our Cube trilogy of films with the third and final film in the series. It's called Cube Zero. Yeah, I feel like they uh, missed the mark on the title, right? It could have easily been called Cubed, right? I mean, the second one was called Cube Squared. So, I mean, naturally it would have been really easy to call it Cube Cubed or just Cubed, but not Cube Zero. But I guess it is what it is. This is probably the film in the series that I've seen the least from, but that's not to say that it's bad. It's definitely a bit different than the others. I mean, regardless, I'm not gonna be Marty about it. So let's get cracking. This review is brought to you by the word of the day, Marty, grumpy or moody, AKA sulky. Cube Zero goes behind the scenes and focuses on the people controlling the cube. In this particular film, you got Win and Dodd, two men that await orders to keep an eye on the men and women inside the cube. When Win notices a young woman inside the cube that did not consent to being there voluntarily, he stages a rescue mission and heads inside the cube to get her out. There's definitely both things that I enjoyed about this film and kind of thought brought it down a little bit. First of all, I really like that they grounded the franchise again. It no longer is going all out as far as science fiction is concerned and it once again went back to practical effects for the traps themselves, which I think was actually one of the best things about the first film. So there was more of that, and the cube itself has once again changed. Not much, mind you, but just enough for you to take notice. This cube felt really primitive, I want to say, and because of that, it felt much more realistic than maybe the first or second film combined. So that was good, as was the math that kind of went in to figuring out how to escape. It wasn't as in-depth as the first film, but it could have been if they focused a little bit more on the prisoners of the cube. I also did like how they introduced a glimpse of what goes on outside the cube with these two guys and the corporate office upstairs. There's still a massive ball of mystery that surrounds it, even though you do get to see what's going on and how things operate. The guy that actually comes down from the corporate office in this movie was a really good character. He's over the top, but weirdly enough, it works. He's creepy, he's in your face, and he feels a bit unhinged, but to be honest with you, that's perfect because these cubes wouldn't really work without somebody in the background being unhinged. I also liked how one of the guys behind the scenes voluntarily goes into the cube to save somebody else. That felt pretty fresh and interesting. I, I didn't know how it would end because of that. And all around, I dug what they did in this movie. As far as negatives are concerned, it's a bit of a double-edged sword because the things that I consider to be good about this movie also kind of hurt the film at the same time. What do I mean by that? I mean, the stuff going on outside the cube watered down the moments in the cube itself. I mean, it watered down what could have been really good dialogue of people trying to figure out how to escape. It watered down the mystery of how this cube operates and how that differs from the other films. And it takes a very, very long time to get to the inciting incident. Now, while the other films kind of start on the inciting incident and forego an introduction, this one has that introduction, which it like takes an hour to get to the inciting incident and that's just too long i mean yes it allows for some really good character development it allows for some of the better acting presentations out of any of these films but other than that the story takes a while to get to a spot where you're like oh okay there's the point of no return oh okay there's the no going back moment that's what i look for in an inciting incident and it is there it just it takes a while to get there it's late in the game for some that's an issue it's not what i prefer but look it's a good movie and it has has everything that it needs to have while the others sometimes lacked in those departments. Let's go ahead and break down my final score for a second. From a technical, unbiased level, I can see that they've improved on a lot of areas that felt cheaper in the other films. Visually, they figured out a lot of their problems with CGI, especially when it came down to shading. They brought it back to some really good practical effects work too. Writing-wise, they made it a much more balanced film that weaves between the cube itself and the people behind it. I gotta give the unbiased score 76%, which out of the entire trilogy is the highest unbiased score out of the bunch. The bias score is even higher at 90% because I definitely have a good time every time that I see it. This is, however, a slightly lower bias score than the first or second movie, but averaging out these scores together, we come to the final rating of 83%. 83 out of 100 possible stars, or a B-letter grade, which, by the way, due to its technical improvements, sets this film as the best of the trilogy overall by 3%. But I'd like to hear your thoughts on Cube Zero in the comment section down below. When it comes down to this trilogy as a whole, which one do you think of first, and what are your thoughts on this third movie? As for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this review, because there's always more like it coming out each and every single day. Hit the subscribe button and bell to be notified when I come out with my ranking video covering every movie that I saw this month. And until then, peace out! Dave examines movies. We 
just watch for fun. Davey is the expert. He is the number one critic that I go to when I need a movie pick. Thanks for joining up with us. 